Are you Shraddha? How are you? Yes, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good too. Thank you for asking. Can you tell us something about yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Shraddha Yadav. I'm from Satara. Mm -hmm. uh, I have five plus years of experience in the quality domain. Mm -hmm. Currently, I'm working with the Explore India as a software engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm IT adept with the uh, comprehensive technical knowledge and realistic te uh, testing knowledge. Mm -hmm. And my roles and responsibilities are like uh, test execution, uh, test case designing, uh, test management, defect tracking, defect logging. Uh, I have uh, experience in the tools like HP ALM, Jira, SOAP UI, uh, uh, and Postman. Uh, so I'm following your uh, channels from past uh, one year. And oh. I like the way... Uh, you are interact with the candidate so it is my pleasure that you are taking this interview oh wonderful thank you so much yeah, yeah. so can you tell us something about your day-to-day -day roles and those responsibilities how do you start your day uh currently i'm working as a manual tester so my, uh, my day start uh, uh start with the login after login i first check uh, my emails Mm -hmm. uh, and if there is any uh, Jira ticket uh, is in the retest, uh, retest or any bug is in the retest, mm -hmm. so I have to go there and uh, check uh, check the check the bug. Mm -hmm. And after that, uh, I started uh, uh, revising my uh, post test cases. Uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, I will uh, execute those test cases uh, which were not, not completed yesterday. After that, I start uh, executing the new test cases in the regression portfolio. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I got any defect, I will uh, log it into the Jira. Mm -hmm. So this is my day in uh, in the company. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's say if uh, your test manager comes to you and they ask you to create a test plan for testing Amazon website. So, which are the different uh, things that you will incorporate in your test plan? How will you create your test plan? Uh, test plan uh, is basically a document uh, which has the scope objectives and approaches. So, uh, firstly, uh, it will include the introduction about the project, uh, what, what will be we are testing uh, and uh, what will be in scope and uh, what will be out of scope. If we are testing function uh, functionalities, then it will include only functional testing. If uh, we are providing non-functional testing support, then it will include the non-functional testing uh, in scope. Mm. And uh, what, what we are not providing, it will go into the uh, out of scope. Then uh, there will be the um, uh, roles and responsibilities uh, who will do what task uh, that will be described in the roles and responsibility. Uh, how many uh, roles will be there means test manager, uh, how much team will require, how much efforts will require to complete the testing. So yeah. uh, how many days will require, uh, how much training we have to give to the people uh, that will be included in the test planning. Mm -hmm. Then how we will uh, give the test matrix and uh, test uh, testing reports that mm -hmm. will be included mm -hmm. uh, in the test plan. Uh, so uh, these are the things uh, I get in the mind while doing the test planning. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. So uh, the very important thing, the test deliverables you can also include. I think you mentioned one of the report then you can also mention about test metrics, bug report, then uh, yeah. requirement traceability metrics, test cases, then test metrics, customer sign off. So all those things also you will include in your test deliverables. Then which are the various testing tools that you will use? Maybe if you are doing automation, you might go for Selenium. If you are using test management or defect management tool, you can include Jira as well, right? So those things yeah. you can include, then which would be the test methodology? What would be the test method methodology you would be looking for? Like whether you would be going for agile, waterfall, iterative, in, what, what are the things that are in scope? Which are the things that are out of scope? So these all things are very important if you create test plan, because generally what happens if the testing completes, 
then people will tell you okay this has not been tested this was already to be tested then all those things are coming like that okay no worries uh, let me share my screen now this is a scenario based question are you able to see my screen yes okay now there is a text file in which you have got repetitive fields account number transaction id transaction details right now how will you retrieve transaction id for a particular particular account number uh, through the sql query or mm -hmm. yes text. yeah database is one of the way that you can approach yes. now let's say if you don't have access to the database then Uh, let me think over that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Let's take your time. Uh, if it is text file, then uh, it will be in the notepad. So I can uh, do control F mm -hmm. for the transaction ID I need. Mm -hmm. And uh, respective in the respective row, I can find the particular account number for that uh, uh, transaction ID. Okay. Any any other option or any other way that you would be taking? I think uh, at this situation, I can't find only two ways. Okay, no worries. No, this is also good. See, in the time of interview, already there is a lot of uh, uh, pressure. We all feel stress because we don't know what the question is going to come from an interview. But still, you gave your best, right? So that is half the battle won. But let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. So what would be the answer of this uh, question? Just analyze from a testing perspective and then put in the comment section okay now let me move to the next scenario okay now there is uh you are working in a team you have one junior tester along with you who is having kind of one year of experience and you have one developer one project manager so it's a very small team now there is a login field uh, sorry there is a login page login screen is there which needs to be tested in the username field the tester gave both the correct username and he left the password blank right after clicking on the login button now the page is navigating to the unexpected page right now there is only one developer in the project at this particular time and uh, uh, you have to deliver this product to the customer right so how will you justify this bug what will you tell them in the uh, how how will you convey this kind of bug to the customer? Let's say you found this bug in the morning or in the afternoon, right? Somehow the deployment happened and it just came up. Everything else was testing within the application after login. Everything is working fine, but this has just come up. And uh, in your daytime, so in our daytime, let's say around 3 p.m. IST, you found this bug. The customer will be online off at 5.30 p.m. IST. They are working from US. So how will you convey this defect? And what justification will you give for this last minute bug that has come up? Uh, as uh, as after giving the uh, blank password, it is uh, redirecting to uh, a unexpected page. Uh, so mm -hmm. it should not happen. It is hampering to the basic functionality of the soft, mm -hmm. uh, a software application. It, mm -hmm. it is at the login page. Hmm. So, uh, definitely this bug is of uh, high priority and high severity, hmm. uh, but uh, as it is came at the last time, uh, uh, so uh, we have to, uh, we have to resolve it, uh, means even if there is a, a one developer, but hmm. uh, as it is, uh, it is high priority and high severity bug, so he has to uh, he has to resolve it as uh, as early as possible and at the customer point if uh, we uh, means 
i uh, i will uh, convey it in the such a way that uh, that uh, this is hampering the basic functionality so uh, and we are trying to resolve it as soon as uh, possible mm. so uh, uh, so uh, and uh, uh, i will uh, then uh, 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 try to make a uh, root cause analysis why this bug is uh, uh, missed from tester so uh, if uh, at uh, uh, and i will pr present that rca to the customer mm -hmm. and uh, if that bug is uh, missed and uh, got leakage uh, so at the at the end so uh, i will try to um, try to add it into the uh, RTM and uh, will try to cover that test case uh, and uh, test case in my uh, portfolio and uh, will try to automate that if it is possible. That scenario. Okay. Okay. Fine. See, uh, now the tester gave the correct user team, right? Now there is a catch over here, right? See uh let me show you earlier also okay now there are two scenarios particularly hidden into this scenario okay so first scenario is the tester gave both the correct username and password right so then what happens right the next is uh, the username and password combination in that if you get give correct username and leave the password blank right so then it is navigating to the unexpected page now in normally in 90 percent or in i would say 99 percent of scenarios hardly it would happen that someone will leave the password field as blank right there are very less chances because see it's not about happy path or about negative testing but it's about mindset it's about how the end user is going to use that particular application that particular page very less people will do such kind of things like monkey testing you can say they will enter some username they leave the password field blank and click on login button because that does not sound to be the way as the end user will be using it so if you see in the first combination username and password both are correct so you can communicate to the client this is about first scenario okay so you can communicate to the client that via email because it will be a daytime at our place so it will be a night time at their place so just communicate via email the problem statement and below and uh, mention what is the possible solution that you are applying and how will you take care that this situation does not hampers the production or the life and at the same time the risk is also mitigated that is very important see uh, if if you will tell to the customer or to the client that there is a problem there is a problem so they will feel like okay there is a problem what next so then you have to come up with some solution okay yes there is a problem Pro there is a problem statement now we need a solution right it's like uh, uh, just telling about problem on, not only during the date uh, or the time of live or production release but also in the daily situations also we should always tell them the com we should communicate the problem statement along with the possible solutions so that they uh, their peace of mind or their uh, trust factor uh, is not going from us so we are keeping one level of transparency by telling to them and at the same time we are also winning their trust factor that even if the challenges come at the very last moment but still we as a team are born to win in this kind of situation mm -hmm. okay so, and now coming to the second scenario if the password field is blank and you are clicking on the login button and it lands you to the unexpected page it's a low severity low priority defect which you can take it up after production release also yes. okay yeah Fine. so this is how you have to answer Okay. Okay. Now you were testing 
Uh, yeah. Now you were doing mobile testing. Okay, this is a mobile testing scenario. Mm -hmm. Now what happens is in mobile you have various functionalities, various features are there. One of the feature is alarm. Okay. Now mm -hmm. in in case of testing, whenever your phone, uh, whenever you switch on the alarm. You set the alarm for some particular timings. Let's say you want to wake up at 6.30 a.m. So you set alarm for 6.30 a.m. But then or whenever you uh, switch on the alarm, you do some settings, your phone gets turned off. So what approach you will adopt for testing? And how will you try to identify the root cause in this kind of scenario? Uh, as uh, the phone phone get turned off uh, during uh, the switching on the alarm, so I will uh, focus on the alarm functionality of the phone, mm -hmm. and uh, I will try different inputs. I mean, uh, will it uh, will it get it getting turn off at the a.m. p.m. setting or at the particular uh, time when I'm setting the alarm? So mm -hmm. I will uh, test that. Um, uh, then after uh, 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 if there uh, there are any logs created uh, hmm. during this crash uh, I will check that logs uh, and I will convey uh, those uh, into the text file uh, to the developer uh, while uh, raising the bug. Uh, then um, Uh, then I will uh, switch off the phone and again start it and will uh, test uh, uh, test that uh, again uh, turning on the alarm uh, will cause the same defect. So I will uh, change in the, uh, the, I will check in the various uh, possible ways and uh, write down the steps uh, that are causing uh, crashing of the uh, application, uh, mobile application. Uh, or crashing of the phone uh, and will raise the bug for that. Okay, fine. See, whenever you get this kind of question in an interview, so there are two things that are being asked over here. What is the approach you will adopt? Secondly is how will you try to find the root cause? For root cause, you approached, uh, you try to find out the logs you try to find out the reasons mention if some exceptions are coming in the log, log files but now think from that aspect that this is just a phone in the question it can be an android phone it can be an ios phone it can be yes. again in android there are various versions it can be the latest version it can be the legacy version again it can be a mm -hmm. template so there are kinds of phones that are available so you can go for compatibility testing Right. What mm -hmm. is the approach you will adopt for testing? Right. So one thing is you can go for compat compatibility testing. Second thing is whenever you sit with the with the development team, whenever you sit with the other team members. So we are working as a team. We are working in an agile methodology. So they have done unit testing. So you can ask them to showcase unit test cases for alarm functionality when they tested alarm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when they tested alarm so is everything working fine if everything is not so there are two possibilities if everything is working fine then you can focus on the integration scenario of phone when you integrate this alarm with uh, in the phone applic in the phone mobile phone right and if that unit testing is not done properly then again you can request them to do some unit testing with one or two other scenarios right 
So this is how you can uh, approach in this kind of situations because this is going to be a critical bug. Mm -hmm. Phone itself is getting turned off. Okay. Now try to narrow it down further. Now, is it like every time it is getting, uh, whenever you set the timing in the alarm, for example, you are setting it at night or you are setting it at morning, afternoon, mm -hmm. evening, which are the various phases. So try to narrow down the problem statement. Yes. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is how you can test it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay. Now consider a situation where you have to test scheduler functionality or feature, right? Scheduler means, let's say you are aware about Windows scheduler, you would have shed or, um, or you can say the feature would be whenever you schedule something or task or let it be an event like anniversary event or birthday event, then it gives you a snooze or kind of a reminder to you that this particular task is is you have to do so something like to do list we are made we are making every day at the beginning of the day we need to do the do this all so we create one scheduler that at 2 pm this uh, notification should come to me at 5 pm i have a doctor appointment so this notification should come to me at 4 45 so i'll uh, meet a doctor at 5 so kind of a scheduler how will you test a scheduler functionality Uh, in the positive testing, uh, I will uh, input uh, uh, input the uh, I means uh, input the data as a two uh, m. So it will uh, be uh, it will um, means it will give uh, the pop up or any reminder at the two pm. Uh, so it will be in the positive scenario. Uh, means uh, if and uh, uh, in the compatibility, I will check uh, the uh, system timing. If system timing is 24 hours or 12 hours, according to that, uh, it is giving me reminder or not. Uh, then um, uh, at the uh, boundary values, I mean, I, uh, if I am setting at the 2 a.m., uh, it uh, or uh, I'm setting like a, a two uh, thirty-five or two thirty-four. Uh, it is uh, it is giving me at the same uh, same time or correct time uh, uh, the reminder or not that I will check. Uh, then uh, if I have not mentioned AM or PM or, uh, or anything like that, uh, will it? Uh, reminding me at uh, uh, morning time or at in the uh, evening time that I will check. Uh, then uh, snoo snoozing functionality means uh, if, uh, if I snooze that uh, reminder, then it will, uh, whether it is popping up again or not, I means uh, if I'm setting it at the 2, 2 a.m., so uh, after five, mi uh, 5 minutes or after 10 minutes, it is again uh, popping it or not that I will check. Mm. Uh, so uh, and uh, for the performance, I will set uh, multiple reminders uh, th throughout the day. Uh, uh, then again, can, I can uh, uh, set the reminders for for five five minutes uh, by uh, by the interval of five five minutes, uh, whether they are working or not. Uh, that I will check. Um, And uh, the, the reminders are uh, taking, uh, oh, I mean, uh, if it is IST zone, it should take uh, the uh, correct timing. If it uh, they, uh, they are set into the uh, other time zone, so they should take the time accordingly. It means it, they should adapt the machine's timing. So that I will check. Or the scheduler. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. Um, okay. 
So you are using Tosca. I was just going through your resume. Yes. So which are the different components that are available in Tosca and how do you use them? Uh, there are different components like a Tosca commander, Tosca executor, uh, then uh, mm, uh, repositories. Mm. Uh, so uh, in the Tosca commander where all the workspace are there, so uh, there are different uh, sections in that test case requirements. Mm. Uh, then uh, there is the execution uh, issues. Uh, so uh, all these sections are in the commander uh, section. And executor is the uh, is the application through which we can execute the test cases. Mm. Uh, and repository uh, is the um, is the uh, storage where uh, all the work can be stored. Uh, user uh, user accesses are stored. If uh, one user check out the uh, workspace, then. Uh, then it will be locked for the single user and multiple user repositories are there. So if multiple users are working on that, so it will uh, check out and check in according to that uh, in the repository. So these are the uh, sections of the Tosca. Do you integrate, uh, do you have integration of Tosca along with uh, defect management tool, any defect management tool that you are using? Let's say if Jira is there or any other. Yes. So yes. You have integrate. Uh, yeah. Yes. So what are the advantages um, of integrate? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. You are telling. Yes. Uh, I have integ uh, means there is an integration. Uh, so uh, when, uh, when we need to raise a bug, uh, through uh, uh, through for the test cases executed in the Tosca. Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a uh, connect Tosca connect through mm -hmm. uh, to the Jira. Mm -hmm. through which uh, it redirect to the uh, Jira login and uh, there we have to put the username password and uh, Jira will open and after that we can raise the bug there and automatically it will uh, link that bug to the uh, issue section and from the issue section we have to uh, link that bug to the uh, failed test case. So uh, manually, we have to uh, link uh, issue uh, to the test uh, fail test case, and issue uh, Tosca issue will be di directly connect to the Jira uh, Jira issue mm -hmm. through the Tosca connect. Okay, fine. Now consider a situation where uh, you had you have ten user stories in a sprint. Okay, sprint is of one month, and uh, based on your team's capacity and team's velocity you have taken 10 user stories for testing now unfortunately the sprint is about to end and you have a demo scheduled in the evening and today is the last day of the sprint and out of 10 user stories you were able to complete eight user stories and two user stories are still remaining maybe it is because of uh, consider like people were on leave or task uh, was not come like task clarity was not there understanding was not there so your team was not able to test it right so there was a lot of communication done between development testing team and other team members but somehow now two user stories are left to be test tested out and the sprint is completing today so how will you provide justification to the project managers delivery managers that these two user stories are spilled over. So for what reasons they have been spilled over? So how will you justify? Uh, actually, uh, two stories are remain, uh, means uh, there is a failure in the planning. So mm -hmm. based on the capacity and velocity, pa uh, past sprints capacity and velocity, I need to take the points. Uh, if uh, I have taken the extra uh, story points that uh, that is out of the capacity, so uh, if there is a uh, less manpower in the sprint, so I have to early uh, decide, uh, means from the past uh, five uh, sprints, I have to calculate the capacity and uh, capacity and uh, velocity of my team. And uh, that's, uh, according to that, I need to uh, pick the points uh, uh, to the sprint, but uh, in, uh, 
but unfortunately if two uh, story points were left then um, i will uh, convey the uh, problems we had faced during the uh, sprint in, uh, in the uh, uh, the points we have uh, we have noted in the re uh, sprint retrospective and i will put that points to the uh, project manager or a, a customer and i will pick those two uh, two stories uh, in the next sprint Okay. So it will be the lesson learned that we have uh, failed in the planning, uh, in the taking, uh, you, uh, we have overburdened the team with the uh, maximum story points. Uh, so in the next uh, uh, sprint, we will uh, incorporate that to you, you, you story points and uh, will rethink about the capacity and velocity of the sprint. Right. Correct. And you can also justify like maybe if you have written the test cases and you know what part like what is to be tested so you can tell it will take less time without compromising the uh, task deliverable of the next sprint so that's how you can plan accordingly or if if, if possible you can uh, have some help from the dev team member who is not having any work and you can just take his help to execute the test cases as you have already written the test cases so you can ask him or her to just execute the test cases on a very high level so at least you come to know okay 90 percent of the task is completed it is working fine just 10 percent bugs are there it should not happen like 10 percent is working 90 percent still bugs are left out okay yeah but there and, will be risk involved in that that we yes. should convey to the customer there is a okay. risk Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, Shraddha, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? I would like to uh, know about my feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. Means I am preparing for the interviews. So, mm -hmm. this mock interview is very important to me. Mm -hmm. That's why I I want my feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, uh, agile related questions like uh, sprint planning test planning, test estimation, test plan. I think those questions you were able to answer properly. When it comes to scenario-based questions, when I was sharing my screen and you had to think, right? So mm -hmm. uh, like you started thinking in the right direction. You were able to analyze the situation. Now, what, what it would be good in an interview for you is to think from all the angle. Let's say if you are doing if you are thinking from happy path, positive testing, what about negative? We were thinking about that alarm example. Whenever you turn on alarm, phone gets. So what kind of phones are coming in your mind? Like it's, I've just told a phone. So the more clarity you, you don't like, it depends on what kind of phones we have, Android, tablet, iOS. So try to uh, think in the same lines of that question, right? What okay. as a tester you can feel? what is a test see if if you are at a customer if you are at end user end and someone is giving to you demo and he is telling you on a very uh, layman's language that phone is getting off so what kind of phone so next question there will be what kind of phone mm -hmm. is it happening with every kind of phone so those yeah. kind of things you have to work on but i think uh, overall it was too good based on your experience you were able to answer it was not happening like you were getting totally blank whenever such kind of questions were coming. Yes, you were taking time and it it was it is fine also that you are requesting the interviewer that let me think on this. So it is fine because see, we don't know what question is going to come. So our mind needs some time to think. And whenever you are thinking, you are thinking in the right direction, but it is just that it was 60 to 65 percent. So it would be good if you give 90 to 95 percent in that direction. 100 percent is not possible because already during the interviews, mind is having a lot of stress. We feel a lot of nervousness in us. What kind of questions he's going to ask? What is going to happen mm -hmm. next? So 100% is not possible. But try to give your best. Like yeah. Rest all looks good. Yeah. Communication skills were was fine. Were fine. Yeah. Then presentation skills were fine. Uh, audio, video, clarity was there. No network issues. So I think it was good. Right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you so much, Radha, and wish you all the best for your career. And please share interview questions with us at our official email ID, rdautomationlearning at gmail.com. We will create videos for the community. Right. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bye.